Philippians chapter 2, the Bible says he humbled himself. He took humility for him to be a man. Are you following me? So if you call him an apostle, you are saying he's a man. You are correct. But the kind of man he is in God's definition is not the kind of man you, you want to explain. He's not the apostolic man, not the prophet as the way you want to explain. According to scriptures, the Bible referred to him as the son. The, you know, the names of Jesus in the Bible are not many. One of them is that he's the son. Number two, he's the word. If you take me to John chapter 1, is it John 1? Gospel of John. Can we go to Gospel of John? Ah, Bible study, but it's taking longer now. John chapter 1 from verse 1. Let's look at another um, sample. In the beginning, uh, this was before there was a printing press, before there was a man to write, before there was a text book, before there was a Bible. When? In the beginning. What was in existence in the beginning? The word, the logos, and if you go down this scripture, you realize that the person we are talking about here is who? Jesus. So the name of Jesus in the beginning is not Jesus. His name from the beginning is... It was John that gave us insight into who he was from the beginning. And he didn't say he's the mother. If you go to Matthew chapter 1, go to Luke chapter 1, go to Mark chapter 1, you are going to find out that the genealogy of Jesus was coming from the standpoint of men. He told us about his parents before telling us about him, his parents in the flesh. But John, in his communication, took us into hallowed antiquity, brought us a revelation of Jesus that is not in the world of men. And he brought that revelation from the beginning. So before there was a man to say yes to a woman, God was in existence and he was existing as the word and the word was with God and the word was God. I don't have time to press on this, but I can show you several other scriptures in the Bible where Jesus was not called Jesus. If you find him in heaven, they might not be calling him Jesus at that time. His name was the word. Philippians 2 9. Are you still here? Hello? Are you sure we can do this? I want us to pray. Philippians 2 9. Wherefore, God also highly exalted him and given him a name. Somebody say a name. Mm. So before now, there was a different name. But at this point, he was given a name and at his name every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord at this point we had an adoption of a name this name was adopted at the name of Jesus so this name was not the name from the beginning as a matter of fact, there are footballers that have this name. Is that true? Yes, there's Gabriel Jesus. <laughs> to tell you that this is the name of a locality, is a, is a people on earth that have this name. But before he was called this name, he had an explanation. He had an interpretation. There was a person he was, and that person is the word. That's the first thing that the Bible refers to to Jesus as. You will still find it in the book of Revelations. But we don't have time. There are several times in the book of Revelation that Jesus was not called Jesus. The Bible called him the Word. The Word. And the Word was made flesh. And he dwelt among us. So at the time he became flesh, we changed his name to Jesus. But before he became flesh, it was what? The Word. The second thing the Bible called Jesus is his son yes and son in that context is the word wills at the mount of transfiguration a strange sight happened the apostles of jesus they were with him on that mountain and all their life they felt they had known him yes 
Many people thought they knew Jesus. And the truth is that from their explanation of what they know, they seem to be correct. Is this, is this not the carpenter's son? Is this not the son of Mary? Is this not, is his father not Joseph? Some people even told us his brother's name in scriptures. All this explanation of Jesus were correct until God began to reveal him all by himself. And when God spoke from heaven, he didn't say, this is Jesus. He said, this is my beloved son. And in the context of son, I said, it is wills. Wills means equality with God. God is saying, this is my equal. This is me. Hello? So Jesus was also referred to as the son of God. The son of God. Among them, there's another one. Another one I want to make reference to and then we'll pray with that one. Okay. Maybe I should explain to you what it means to be a son of God, but we don't have time. There, there, there's a lot of intricacies to being a son. You see, when Jesus said that he's the son of God, if you remember in scriptures, the Bible says that the Pharisees said that he claimed equality with God. Because according to them, calling himself the son of God in that context means equality with God. He's saying me and God were the same. That was exactly what he said. Jesus forgives sins. And they came to him and said, why are you forgiving sins? Only God has power to forgive sins. And then he tells them, that's why I'm doing it. Because only God. <laughs> that's exactly, you are correct. I do it because only God has power. That's why it's me. That's doing it. So he claimed again and again, he claimed equality with God and it messed up their mind from their interpretation of who God should be. No man should stand on earth and say he's God. It's an, it's an embarrassment. They had, they hallowed the name of God so well that you don't, you, you wash your hand or bath to write Yahweh on paper. So if you want to write a book and Yahweh must appear 35 times, how many times will you wash? So you stop and go and wash and then write. Stop, go and wash, write. To make sure you are clean enough to write the name. And somebody comes up and says, it's me. If you were in their day, you might follow, you might be the person that will be. You, if they say, hold cloth for me, let me stone this guy. You will say, no, you hold my cloth. <laughs> let me deal with it. <laughs> so the claims he made were big claims. And God agreed. He said, he is my son. There is nothing we can do about it. Right? Another thing the Bible referred to Jesus as is a priest. A priest. Yes, the Bible called him the high priest. All this while, people presented themselves as priests on earth. They did many things. They claimed high priest. But at the time Jesus came, he showed us that in priesthood, there are levels in tabernacles. You can bring sacrifices on earth, but there, are, there is a priest, one priest, that brings sacrifice to the heavens. One. And that priest is Jesus. That after I am done, I will be able to make many other people begin to behave like me as priests, so that they can present sacrifice before God. And that's a license we have to be able to bring sacrifice to God. If you realize the Bible um, in extension in the New Testament, when Peter began to talk about us, he didn't say we are, we are children of God alone. The Bible agrees we are sons of God. That's taken the place of Jesus. But it didn't end there. He said we are a royal priesthood. We are called into an order of priests. And that order of priests was made possible because a man, Jesus, went through the necessary sacrifice and found himself in the Holy of Holies and presented the sacrifice once and for all. From that day, men were given license and permission. If you remember, the Bible says that while he was hanging on the cross, that the, the cloth, the temple cloth, tore from top to bottom. It was an access point to every son. 
So, Jesus is not just a priest. He's a priest according to one order. Because there's the Levitical priesthood. Our priesthood is not the Levitical priesthood. There is the Aaronic priesthood. Our priesthood is not the Aaronic priesthood. But there is the Melchizedek priesthood. Our priesthood is according to the order of Melchizedek. We are the priests that bring sacrifices not on earth, but in heaven. Jesus made a highway and made it possible for us to be able to do it. So Jesus was also referred to as a priest. It's more honorable to be a priest than to want to be an apostle. That's what I'm saying. Hello? I know you don't believe me. I would rather be a waiter, be a priest, than want to be any other thing. It was David that told us that it's better to be a doorkeeper in the presence of God because the ministry of a priest is within the temple. That's where his job is. That's where his office is. That's where his jurisdiction that He doesn't have a business necessarily with men. As long as he's there, everything that men are looking for is coming there. And this is what the Bible has opened to us as believers. We can come into the Melchizedek priesthood and be able to bring sacrifices before God. One of the ways Jesus was able to create that pathway, the Bible told us in Hebrews chapter 5. So we'll, we'll look at it and then we'll do what Jesus did. Are you still with me? Hebrews chapter 5, that's where we're going. For every high priest taken from among men hmm, is ordained for men in things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. Verse 2. Let's go. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. He's still talking about Jesus. Next verse. We don't have time. And by reason Hereof he, he ought, as for the people, so also for himself to offer for sins. And no man, somebody say, No man, no man take this honor upon himself, but Aaron, but he that is called of God, just as he called Aaron at some certain point. Let me ask you. Do you think we are called of God as priests? Should I take us to scriptures to prove this point that I've, I've, I've quoted First Peter already? The thing the Bible says no man take this honor upon himself. He's not a prophet. Is what? Priest. What is honorable in the kingdom is what? Priesthood. Help me preach your neighbors here. Priesthood is honorable. Yes. If you want to go the way of priesthood, you are taking an honorable part. He that desires the office of a bishop desires good work. But here, no man takes the honor. It means there's a lot of honor that comes with being at the feet of Jesus. A lot of honor comes with being the one that stands before him. Do you know it's important who you serve? You can be a driver. Who do you drive? You can be a hairdresser. Whose hair do you dress? You can be a seamstress, a fashion designer. Who do you make clothes for? The person we stand before is not a president. He's not a governor. Not even the queen of England. He's the monarch. The real monarch. Before there was anybody in existence, he was there. His kingdom has been there all along. And he called us to be able to stand before him as priests. Every man that has ranking in priesthood automatically has a measure of authority assigned by God. The angel came to, um, what's his name? In, in Luke chapter 1. What's the name of that uncle? Zechariah in the temple. And then Zechariah said, I'm a priest, but my kind of priesthood is turn by turn. You do priesthood today, we do. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, the era of turn by turn priesthood is over. <laughs> Don't wait till tomorrow for the prayer. No. 
Don't wait till next year to bring incense. No. Don't say some people are praying today. We will pray tomorrow. Or I have prayed in the morning. Turn by turn is over. And he came to Zechariah. He brought a word from the Lord. Although Zechariah is a priest. But does not have a current model. Because if you are a priest and you stand before the presence of God. There are things you know. Hello? It was Zechariah that was told. There is a baby coming. We have chosen your family as the medium of bringing this baby into the earth. His name shall be John. Zechariah looked around and said, Oh God, do you have to talk every day? Me too. I'm a priest. And Gabriel told him, My own priesthood is not your kind of priesthood. You people come and go. You do it on Wednesday evening alone. You do it on Tuesday morning alone. You do it on Friday night alone. Me, where do I stand? For the presence of God. There is a lot of current explanations, current mode from heaven that I have that you don't, you don't have information about. If your priesthood is solid, it will be current. I'm not talking about noise making. I'm talking about real priesthood. People that have all and a consciousness of the presence of God. Some men came to pick a servant of God in scriptures. He says, if I be a man of God. That's priesthood. It means where I am is not where everybody is. My place is the altar. People that have become mobile altars, they travel with God at pace. They move with God on the streets. Their pursuit, their purpose is God. That was the kind of person Jesus was. And that's the kind of person he expects us to be. Because it is honorable. Don't desire to be an apostle. Just calm down. Don't desire to be a prophet. No need for now. Engage in priesthood long enough. There are many things about your life that will find expression. It's men that will look for you to give you title. Meanwhile, in that day, when a priest is functioning in his office, even a title is weak because he speaks as God. If it was God speaking, you might not have a title for him. Are you still with me? Hmm. Let's take it a little further. Verse 5. We begin to round off so that we can pray. So also, Christ, so the first person that was called to the priesthood family, the Bible says is Aaron, but Jesus also, Christ too, glorified not himself to be made a high priest. So the Bible told us he is a priest. Do you agree on that, on this one? But he had said unto him, are you seeing? Thou art my son. I said the first thing that the Bible called Jesus is what? The word. The second thing and the third thing He's a priest. Today have I begotten thee. Verse 6. And he said also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now let's go, let's go to is it verse 7 of that scripture, yes? So look at how he did his priesthood. How did he run his priesthood? He's a priest forever. Had a lot of credentials before spirits. But who in the days of his flesh? That's the day we are around. Are these the days of your flesh? Yes. That Jesus also in the days of his flesh, this was what he did. When he had offered up prayers. So the sacrifice in this context is what? What do we offer? prayers. Much prayers. Prayers upon prayers. Prayers upon prayers. Prayers upon prayers. The more we bring prayers, he enjoys it. That's what God wants. So Jesus, in the days when he was a human being like us, he was not killing cow. He was offering prayers and he was doing it with supplication and strong crying and tears unto him that is able to save him from death. And he was heard in that he 
feared. This is the first time in scriptures that the Bible says Jesus was afraid. The first time. First time. And only time. It was at the gate of priesthood. Because at this point, he was getting to a place where they will separate him from being a priest for a moment. And he doesn't want to have it. Imagine Jesus was a priest all his life bringing incense all his life and then he got to that five minutes that two days that three days that we say they will say you will not be a priest be something else for three days the bible says and he feared he was scared how did you survive not being a priest all these years because jesus was told he was not going to be a priest for three days and he help me ask your neighbor what have you been doing <laughs> Where are you from? A strange creature. If Jesus feared, how have we been living? You live for one week, for two weeks, for one month, for two months, without it? He offered up prayers. Can we offer up prayers? That's all the thing I'm saying is so that we can offer up. Rise on your feet, let's And we need to find out how Jesus did it. We offered up prayers, supplications with strong crying. It means he didn't take it easy. He was not gentle about it, was not nice about it. He did it with strong crying and tears. I will offer up prayers. At this point, you see some of why i take time to teach you scriptures is so that i don't cajole you to do something if you want to do it you know why you even know how he offered up prayers he offered up prayers and you begin to don't watch me do your own body sense until my only gaze is you Spirit keep brooding over me Till I look more like you Until my only gaze is you Spirit keep brooding over me Till I look more like you Are you ready to present a sacrifice before the Lord this evening? We have just 30 minutes of prayers. So I have more like hearts. <laughs> Who in the days of his flesh, in the days of his flesh, the days where he was a man. It's an opportunity for you. Offer it. Offer it. Don't forget priesthood is honoring. All the home for us. No man takes this honor upon himself. No man. It's a royal call that God has brought us into. Capacity to bring sacrifice before God is a privilege. Can you bring it? Let the lifting up of my hands. Here's the evening sacrifice. We are just beginning this journey. We must bring sacrifice before him tonight. So for taking means. For though he were a son, he presented sacrifice. In the days of his flesh, offer prayers again. Engage the ministry of the praying spirit. The ministry of the praying spirit. 
Jesus, who in the days of his flesh offered prayers. My offering is prayers. My thanksgiving is prayers. Whatever I do is prayers. We offer prayers. You have an opportunity. It's an honorable call to stand before God to offer prayers. Here I stand before the God of all the earth to pray, to pray. Here I stand before the God of all the earth. I stand before the God of all the earth. The sacrifice you are bringing, like the lifting up of my hands, be as the evening sacrificed. Let it ascend before thee like a sweet smelling savour. There is a praying spirit inside of me by which I bring sacrifice. I bring in sins. Mola Cabello Saiba Notas. It's a royal call of priesthood. There is nothing better than being a priest. Nothing more honorable than being a priest. We stand before the God of all spirits, the Father of all flesh. We stand before the Maker of the heavens and the earth, before the great monarch, on whom there is no shadow of darkness, no variableness, no turning. I come, same come braske vona mantal, me loka paraske somiate komalahakas. The ministry of priests. God who at certain times and in diverse manners spoke to our fathers by the prophets who has in this last days spoken to us by his son who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person is a call to priesthood men and women who can offer prayers much prayers much prayers you don't need a neighbor. Bring your sacrifice alone. Bring it alone, your own way. Samo Kambe. Sabro Kababala Kabres of the Lotus. The power of the priest is not a request for car. Not a request for things, not a request for house. It's a sacrifice before God. Let the angels of God that gathers the instincts of his saints begin to gather out. Who in the days of his flesh? Brother, you are in the flesh. You are still in this body. This is what we do in the days of our flesh. For men always ought to pray and never to faint. Brascometes, Sameto Capande, Aposave la Capa Twante Falacatas. You can be gentle about it. Ah, you cannot be reserved about your incense. You cannot be careful about it. Can you pour it? Pour it at the altar. Empty yourself. Sotompeli. Akemosite Savalacampe. Sabe Kupre 
Eskoma Pate, Saite Malakambe, Brakama Skepo Natamba Sadi, where are the acolytes of God, men who play the incense, where are the acolytes, men who play the sweet smelling savour of God, who knows how to please him, who knows how to bring joy to his face.